<coughs> Greetings everyone. Myself, Dr. Jagannath Samke, third year DHS resident from BOL Nair Hospital. I am here to present a paper on the topic of fetal MRI and a gentle EOG detection of fetal CNS anomalies. Introduction. So ultrasound is the primary modality for fetal image because of its relatively low cost, lack of harmful effect on fetus and mother and its real-time capabilities. The MRI has proven to be useful in characterization of CNS anomalies which are not clearly really visible on EOG either due to technical limitations or due to non-specific appearance of those anomalies. MRI provides good depictions of the anomalies of corpus callosum, posterior and spinal color, which are not really detected by the ultrasound, are detected only with certain level of doubt. Utilization of MRI as a problem solving tool in pre diagnosis of these cases are rapidly increasing. So, aim of my study is to describe the role of MRI as an urgent to ultrasound in the diagnosis of fetal CNS anomalies. The methods include we we had uh, we taken the studies EOG and fetal MRI done in our institute during the period of last two years for the study. So this is the case one, 20 year old ANC mother with 30 weeks of gestational EOG on ultrasound, we can see the dilated retroventricles, ventricles, thyroid ventricles with perimian hypoplasia. So additionally, we did the MRI and we traveled the findings of hydrocephalus, perimian hypoplasia with Jersey by brainstem, small occipital meningosis, non operculation of severe fissures, aka area that is less cephalia and loss of zonal differentiation. So we reported this as a case of walker warburg syndrome. So case two. 29 year old ANC mother with 34 weeks of gestation, the UHC so dilated lateral ventricles, bilaterally with wide and interhemispheric fusion. And the evaluation is incomplete due to the non availability of mid sagittal section, which is due to the bony evaluation artifacts due to increased maternal age, that is 34 weeks. So, once again, with the MRI, the MRI revealed dilated occipital horns, colpocephaly, with small frontal horns, Viking helmet appearance, with absent septal pedicidum. And wide and hemispheric fissure and props bundles. So you can see here. And the sagittal images reveal absent corpus callosum and radiating gyrae. So we reported this as a case of corpus callosal agenesis with corpus cephalic. So case three, as the 38 year old maid, that is with gestation, patient for USG, and we find out anti interhemispheric fissure, vermin hypoplasia, and dilated occipital horns in the USG. On MRI, we can see there is anti interhemispheric cyst. Absent septal pellucida and absent corporal callosum. We can see once again appreciate the Viking helmet sign here. This abnormal neuronal layering pattern seen in the right frontal lobe with polymicro area. We can see the hypoplastic vermis with increased tegment over main angle. And there's upturned and rounded festigium and small occipital meningosis here. And this image we can appreciate thick and superior cerebral lapidunculum with the prominent posture inter in interpreter clophosa. We reported this case as a case of Jobert syndrome with Dante Walker cotidian. The patient underwent postnatal MRI, which also revealed the similar findings. This is a case for another 31 year old antenatal mother with 28 weeks of gestation. She came for UHG and UHG found out very mean hypoplasia with cystic dilatation of posterior fossa. Once again, the reverberation artifacts in the impair the evaluation of posterior fossa. The patient underwent MRI, and MRI we can see dilated posterior fossa with dilated fourth ventricle communicating with the posterior fossa with elevated tentorium cerebral. Line. And there is Tarkula lambda inversion noted in this case. In image B, we can see vermin hypoplasia with increased tegment of vermin angle, measuring 86 degrees. The normal is less than 80 degrees. We can also appreciate hypoplastic cerebellum and mildly dilated retroverte. So we reported this case as a dandy walker malformation. This is last case, case number five. 30, 33 year old ANC mother with 20 weeks of gestation age, come for ultrasound. We can, we can see the widening of spinal canal of the upper dorsal column with dysmorphic posterior bony elements. And there is subscription of spinal colors due to posterior acoustic shadowing. So this patient also underwent MRI and MRI we can see at the level of mystergial region, we, there is splitting of spinal cord with osseous curve. It can be seen in these images along with the dysmorphic posterior elements. And we can also appreciate mild scoliosis. So we reported this case as a case of diastomatomyelia. As a summary, we can see there are five cases. The case number one, walker Wobble syndrome. We found only hydrocephalus and very hypoplasia and EOG. The additional findings in MRI include decent cephalic, anopoclization of severe fissures, small oxygen meningocele, loss of zonal differentiation. In the second case of corpus callosal agenesis, in addition to dilated occipitals on wide and hemispheric fissure, we found that absent corpus callosum, absent septopolis, and prop bundles in MRI. Third case, job syndrome with dandy worker malformation. In addition to the anti hemispheric cyst, very main hypoplasia and dilated occipital horns. We can find out abnormal neuronal layering pattern, polymicrogyria, absent septum pseudo, absent corpus callosum, thickened superior cerebral epidemiology, and oxygen meningosum. Fourth case, 
Then the work confirmation in addition to the appropriation is still additional for step for We can appreciate the triple lambda inversion in MRI with the increased segment of the angular and hypotastic cerebral. In the fifth case of diastomatomalia, we can appreciate avoidance of the cervical spinal canal with dysmorphic post elements and UHE. But the MRI also gave, gave us the added finding of splitting of spinal cord with OCS per and mild score. So, as a discussion, we evaluated retrospectively the efficiency of ultrasound and MRI performed in the pre period in detecting the fetal cranial spinal anomalies. The cranial spinal anomalies are most important area where the MRI contributes to ultrasound. The cranial spinal anomalies almost constitute 80% of the fetal MRI examinations. The most common indication for fetal MRI is ventricular megaly. And 40% of the fetal brain and spinal imaging is performed due to ventricular megaly. The most important clinical consideration in the fetus ventricular abnormality are the severity of the ventricular dilatation and the presence or absence of other CNS abnormality, which can be better delineated with and confirmed by using the MRI examination. There are a few anomalies that ultrasound failed to show or diagnose includes the neural tube defects, cortical malformation, carpal colossal anomalies, and post for some malformation. And these are a few studies that support my paper. So the study done by Robert et al. showed that MRI is frequently used as a axillary method to ultrasound due to its multiplanar imaging capacity and excellent soft tissue resolution. The prior et al. study stated that MRI provides additional information even when using only basic protocols consisting of T1 and T2 VTD measures. Study done by Sotri Adders also showed that MRI detected additional cerebral anomalies in 22.5% of cases with isolated ages of corpus callosum. Hazari also coincided with studies done by Young, Seekal, and Bleacher et al. So, to conclude, the main role of fetal MRI is to confirm and exclude the lesion suspected on EUG to define and extend and demonstrate the associated abnormality. The fetal MRI scores over EUG due to its higher spatial resolution, larger field of view, and ability to visualize fetal anatomy well, despite scanty like. MRI plays an important role in pre-surgical evaluation and post-surgical follow-up in the field of fetal surgery. Simultaneous imaging of different organs and reproducibility of images and producing. Uh, this facilitates the surgical planning and intervention and helps to predict postnatal management and helps in genetic counseling. Other sequences including DWI, ADC, MR spectroscopy, functional imaging and volumetric data acquisition are still under research and are showing future promise. These are some references. Thank you.